Hello, Aaron Ryan, and EuroCup has a problem. So, EuroCup, we're going to assume if you're on a ball in Europe, this channel let you know what EuroCup is. But just in case, for the odd person who's come across this, EuroCup is the second tier competition in European basketball. Some of you are already offended that I said that, but in practical sense it is. It's the tier below EuroLeague. You win EuroCup, you go up to EuroLeague. That part, simple, straightforward. Unfortunately, everything else is a bit too simple, straightforward, and frankly, meh. So, rugby fans who are tuning into this will find an awful lot of what I'm about to say disturbingly familiar. Most of you aren't rugby fans, but you'll understand why. So, right now, EuroCup is a team, with, a competition, sorry, with 20 teams, two groups of 10, and they play 18 regular season games. You know, play double round robin against your nine opponents, simple as that. Okay, great. And then the teams go on to the knockout stages. The problem is how many teams go on to the knockout stages. You need to be epically bad to not go to the knockout stages of Euro Cup. Eight out of each ten teams, 16 of 20, 80% of the teams in Euro Cup make the knockout stages. Now, if European basketball was made of money and we could have super long playoff series that made that meaningful, it would still be terrible. But at least it would be a little bit more meritocratic because of home court advantage and all that. But it's awful, because what have we got? Well, not too many upsets, despite last year when Bursaspor went as an 8 seed and beat a 1 seed, Jovan to Badalona, sorry guys, on their home floor. We've largely not really seen that. I think in the whole of this year's round of 16, that's the 2022-23 season, there was only one away win in the round of 16. The problem is, yeah, it's single elimination from the round of 16 onwards until the finals, which finally gets to a playoff situation. And it just doesn't work. I mean, it's it's awful. It's The regular season is kind of irrelevant because you've got this long, drawn-out, 18-round season. And it is over 18 different weeks. And obviously there are gap weeks as well. So it spreads a lot more than 18 weeks of the actual season. And then suddenly it's super quick and over. Uh, folks, no. YouTube would demonetize me if I was going to make the analogy I want to make. So, although I don't actually have any money coming from this, which reminds me, subscribe so we can actually make money off this channel. It's somewhere around here. It's a subscription thing. Please do if you haven't already. We need to hit a thousand as soon as possible. Please subscribe. Anywho, moving on. But it reminds me of another competition which viewers from certain parts of Europe will be very familiar with. The European Champions Cup in rugby. And it has two things in common with Euro Cup. It used to have a format that worked, and it now has a format that's awful. The format used to basically be five or six, depending on whether it was 20 or 24 teams in it, groups of four, five group winners plus the best three runners up went through. Now you might say, doesn't that mean the group you end up in has a bit of too much influence over who goes through? Yes, to a point, but the bottom line is, if you win all your games and it's six games in the group stage, you still went through. So it's fine. Now it's two conferences of 12. You play four games, not 11, not 22, four games. Two of which are against a mutual opponent. Uh, so you have one, there's one team you play twice. So you only play three teams in total. And pretty much winning one game means you go through. One game out of four means you go to the elimination phase of what is only the premier competition in European rugby. That's awful. But it's still only two thirds of the team, as opposed to of teams, as opposed to four fifths of them going through. Lots of rugby fans have solutions for that. We're not here to fix rugby today. We're here to fix basketball. And a competition I really, really want to care about because here's the thing with Euro Cup. For 18 weeks, I know the games don't matter. When it gets to the knockout stages, I'm not sure I want to really care they matter too. Yeah, most teams are just going to tune in for the team they support, most fans. But if you want to grow a competition, you want to make the fans care through the season. You want to get buy-in from those, those core fans through the season. You want people talking about your competition through the season. And you want the games to matter more. Like you want Badalona fans to know that a game involving, say, Hamburg Towers might actually be relevant to them in February. Like, you know, that there are still, you know, permutations going on. And more often than not, it doesn't. So, what can we do? So, I actually got one thing wrong there. I was saying the final gets to be playoffs. It's not. It's actually still a single elimination game. So, it's even worse than I was saying. Oops. Now, back to what I was about to say. So... Let's say we are stuck with 20 teams. I'm actually okay with that. It's a decent number. And 18 games in a regular season is pretty good to lead into your playoffs. But you're going straight to single elimination then for the whole of the rest of the season. Now, if you're a small league like Ireland, big up to my people, 
that kind of actually works because you're largely amateur or at least very, very, very part time and the costs are limited. So as in what you can actually afford and spend. So going single elimination for which in Ireland's case is eight of 14 teams isn't actually that terrible. But this isn't a, you know, a competition where everybody's broke. Nobody's rich. Well, one or two people are. But like, you know, we can definitely play more games and also we can make those games more interesting all the way through the season. So here's the format I have. For starters, we're not putting 80% of the teams into the knockout phase. We're putting 60%. That's still 6 of 10 in each group. That's most of the teams going through. And old school fans will know that in the old formats, that was actually, you know, pretty normal that you'd have about that percentage going through round and round in European competitions. The old six group teams, it was four teams. That was the old Euro League and Euro Cup did it for a bit as well. So, you know, it's around the right number. But also, more teams can stay relevant longer in the season, not just in a case of top six on each side going through, but what those positions actually mean. So, I'm going to do something which even the NBA doesn't like, and I'm going to borrow an NBA idea which people are kind of going, hmm, about. I'm going to steal the play-ins. So, here's what we do. Group A, Group B... Eastern, Western, Northern, Southern, whatever you want to call it. There are two groups of ten. First seed, home court throughout. Bear with me. Second seed, home court in the quarterfinals. They are both straight to the quarterfinals. Skipping the last 16, if you get a top two spot, you are into the quarterfinals and you've got home court. And home court is going to mean a bit more. And I'll tell you why. Because Teams three through six are still going to progress. They're going to go to play-ins, but we're going to steal the NBA play-in model. For those of you who don't know, it's not simply a case of three versus six or in the NBA seven versus ten, and then four versus five or in the NBA eight versus nine. No, 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 no. They make a mini tournament out of it. It's actually very similar to stuff we see a lot in Australian sports and a bit in rugby league. So team three, third place team, you know, would play team four. Now, obviously, you're crossing over with the groups. That's fine. But you're having a third seed against a fourth seed and vice versa. Great. Third seeds, fourth seeds go through, or you can keep it in the same group. I don't really care, to be honest. The key point is, actually, you know, the key point is that we're going with fairness in the seeding. Personally, within the group might be more practical, but crossover, I think, gives more varied opponents. I know the NBA keeps it in the conference. Let's vary the opponents up here. Let's cross it over. So, group A, team three, group B, team four, vice versa, five, six, five, six. Okay, so we have winners of three, four. Let's assume the top seed wins. We're going to go chalk here for the sake of it. Team three, they're into the quarterfinals. Now, they're obviously against a second seed from the other group, but we're not quite going to get to the quarterfinals just yet. Team four, though, are not out. And in fact, having played away in the play-in against team three, that loser is now at home to play the winner of five versus six. This is straight up taking the NBA model. And the idea is... You're putting value on positions. Obviously, first seed gets a home court advantage, which is a huge deal. At least through to the semifinals, which matters. They all first and second seeds both skip the round of 16. Again, value on the regular season. You want to get a top two spot. But team three and four also know that they get an extra bite at the play-in if they mess it up at the first stage. Whereas teams five and six, you're fighting to get in, but at least you got a shot. So that's still 12 teams, different values on each position. And yes, there's two, <coughs> there's four fewer teams total in the playoffs. But the race to the playoffs, which is the bulk of the time we're watching the competition, or in my case this season, haven't been watching the competition because I haven't cared enough, despite there being a team in London across the water, which should be fascinating me. It just makes more sense, just so much more sense. So that's it. The single elimination is just for the play-ins, though. We're going back to best ofs through the playoff series, for the quarter semis finals. And we're going old school Euro Cup on this. We're going best of threes the whole way. Euro Cup had a best of three series for its quarter semis final before. We're not going to try and reinvent the wheel. We're going best of three series. So you get first seed, you in the quarter finals, know that if you, you will have the first and third games at home. But you also know if you win that, no matter who you're facing in the semi finals, you will have first and third games at home. Second seed, know that has that for the quarter finals, but needs a lot of help. For that in the semi-finals. Third and fourth seeds, or whoever the three, four teams are who make up those spots in the ends, you're traveling the whole time. Now the finals is the only part where it gets a bit awkward. Euroleague may eventually go championship game. I could live with that given the Euroleague itself goes final four, but at least makes it a bit more meritocratic in terms of the playoff form than who gets in. I'm actually recording this during the craziest final weekend of the Euroleague season, which is of course 
not having everybody play at the exact same time because why make things simple? I know. Anywho, the point I'm getting at here is your finals are simple. It's the exact same as the NBA, whoever's with the better regular season record. And if it so happens that they have identical records, I'm sure there are other tiebreakers, people who are good at math and are very good at annoying basketball people, therefore, can sort out. We can sort out a tiebreaker for that. I'm not worried. But again, maybe they go, we see that on the early Final Four weekend. Not a bad idea for getting people to care about Euro Cup in that you have the champions being decided either the day after or the evening after the champions of Euro Cup are decided. Now, personally, I prefer Euro Cup being its own beast. That's me. Uh, so I'd rather the best of three, but I could live with EuroLeague doing that. And this is the thing. This is all about EuroLeague, the governing body, living with it. So let's talk about that. EuroLeague wants to do this. It doesn't know it does, but it does. Because EuroLeague wants its properties, its content, to speak like a business or sport person for a moment, to have the most value. It also wants the teams it wants to win Euro Cup, to win Euro Cup. And before I suddenly get bombarded with EuroLeague Mafia comments, I don't mean that way, but bottom line is, EuroLeague wants the richest, best teams to be in EuroLeague, to win that automatic spot from Euro Cup, as long as it still exists. There are teams who could win Euro Cup this year, who EuroLeague does not want in it, or at least does not want is actually very harsh. Even I am being mean there, and I'm occasionally mm, a bit snarky who EuroLeague would not consider to have as much value to the tournament on a economic level, on a commercial level, as others. That's normal. It is a business. I hate to say it. It's in, sports is an entertainment business, but it's an entertainment business built on merit and built on culture. So let's keep merit and culture, but make it happy for EuroLeague. Why does EuroLeague want to do this? Simple. You want the best teams, but you also want the product to have maximum value. By making this switch around, by putting value on like essentially six different spots, in three, three mini tiers in each group, you're putting real value on the regular season. You're making those teams who are in first, second, want to make sure they hold on to first, second. You're making those teams in third, fourth. No, maybe if we get to the second, things are nicer, but also we do not want to go down to fifth, sixth, and also all the way down to eighth, pretty much. You're going to have teams in the hunt until very late in the day. So I think you're going to have still have most of the teams competitive. And if you're worried the teams aren't, well, those teams have to get better. That's sports. And also, frankly, let's not forget that Slas Vrokla went 1-17 this season in the Euro Cup. Hardly a team that jumps out of threatening. So eight of the nine teams above Slask got into the postseason. Ooh, wow. That sounds like a regular season I want to watch. It isn't. And you know it, Euro League. You want people to want to engage with the content, to want to buy more tickets to the games, to want to buy more season tickets to your member clubs, and to invest more emotionally and, let's be honest, fiscally in the sport. And people are going to do that if you make more of your content more interesting. And that's what this format does. Like I said, your playoff series, think about what we're doing. We're guaranteeing the same number of teams as before a home game in the playoffs. Because remember, if the team that comes fourth wins a play-in, it still has one playoff game at home because we're going back to the playoff system. If the team that comes third wins that play-in, that fourth place team still gets one more game at home. So it's still no loss of postseason home games for top four finishes. Yeah, okay, a few of your teams don't progress. But again, you're raising the value for all of them. I think they're going to like the end product. And frankly, they can lump it otherwise. You need to make sure that the whole is better, not just individual pieces. And also, let's be honest, you want the best possible outcome from Euro Cup, but as for the best, strongest team to get through. And that means single elimination, where anything can happen on the night, is not your friend. If anything, it's your biggest possible enemy. Why would you do this? You want to make sure that there is room for maneuver, that if a team drops the game, it can fight back and do it. I mean, we saw it in another competition the other night, Bond. They dropped their home uh, opener in the best of three playoffs in the quarterfinals of the Basketball Champions League. I think a lot of people would actually bond in that final four the way they played this year. Went back one game two, they get the host game three on Wednesday. They have a makeup after what would have otherwise been, oops, sorry, tough luck. And no offense to Strasbourg, these guys are okay, but just bond have been really good this year. So we've got to give them some shout outs. They did some commentary on their games earlier this year. Been really good to watch. So yeah, I mean, it makes competition more fun. It makes fans more engaged. It solves a lot of commercial issues. And it makes the competition, frankly, more interesting. 
it's a win for everybody. Let's do this. I should be getting paid for this. Anyway, sports consultant, Emmett Ryan, blowing your, at your service. Folks, thanks very much for tuning in. We're going to be doing a lot more videos like this, uh, mostly because we find out a setup. And yeah, listen, thanks for tuning in. Again, please subscribe and please tell your friends to subscribe. We need to get to a thousand as soon as possible. Because, uh, well, let's just say we left a couple of grand on the table at Eurobasket by not being monetized. <coughs> and that would have paid for a lot more coverage this season. So we need to get that 1,000 so we can uh, literally do more of this. So I'm not just in my room. I'm out and about meeting you at basketball. That's what we want to do. Thanks very much. You're great. Like it. Share it. Subscribe. Comment. But most importantly, that third one, please subscribe.